I'm Ellen McCauley. I'm at Pray It Off Session 15, and today is January 15th of 2015, and our mantra, and I love people from last week, I'll, I say to them tonight, hey, remember, 15 and 15, and they're like, what are you talking about? I go, were you paying attention last week? We're talking about losing 15 pounds in session 15. Let's first of all talk about letting God guide our resolutions. I love this article by Father Catoir because he's talking about what God wants us to do for him. It wasn't until I introduced the God part to my weight loss that I have seen some success. Our goal weight should be leaning on him for guidance. What does he want? God loves us right where we are right now, whatever we weigh. He does not have conditions. He doesn't say, Ellen, you've tried for years to get to your goal weight. You haven't done it. I'm not speaking to you anymore. He says, you know, Ellen, I love you. Lean on me. I'm here to help you. Do we wake up every day and say, what can I do today to please God? Do we ever wake up and think that? There's probably a few people in this room that do that because they're awesome. But sometimes I wake up and go, oh no, i got to go to work. And is it icy out? Oh, there's snow. Oh, and I can't eat what I want to eat. Poor me. But do we wake up and say, what can I do to please God? Don't we do that with our friends and our husbands and wives? Don't you say, hey, what can I do to make Bob happy? What can I do to make Ellen happy? But do we say, what can I do to make God happy? He is so pleased when we invite him into our lives and strive to do his will. He wants us to accept his love and share it with others. One of the driving forces of Pray It Off is that God told my heart he would help me if I helped other people. And I cannot tell you the reward that I have in my heart for this group. He wants us to forgive other people. He wants us to comfort other people and have compassion for those who suffer. In our table time, we are there to support people. Because this week, Lena might have had a bad week and her table needs to support her. Or Sue Ellen might say, I'm on the, I'm on the verge of maybe quitting. And the table's got to say, wait a minute. The table time is a time to show the group that you have love and compassion for them. Are we self-centered? Are we like all worried about us, me, me, I, I? There's two kinds of people in this group. There really isn't a lot of self-centered people. But what I see is there's people who everybody else is more important to them. What we need to find is a fine line. A couple of people went to the nutritionist last night, and I want to hear from them in the weeks to come and hear about their success. And they, one person said, did you go? And I really wanted to go, but I have to learn that I can only do so much. I can do this group, I can work, I can take care of my family. We need to take care of ourselves as well. God wants us to be happy. Do you think God's up there going, what can I do to make Ellen miserable today? <laughs> Let me see. God is not of this world. He is not. He knows that there's evil, that there's Satan, that there's temptations. He's there to help us, and he wants to make us help happy. We all received the Holy Spirit at baptism and confirmation, and many of us received it again at the life of the Spirit. We just need to surrender our urgings, and in this case, our urgings for what we need. You know, so many people did well this week, and I'm happy for them. But are you going to do well in March? Are you going to do well in April? That's the key, because we're on a healthy lifestyle journey for life. He wants us to surrender these urgings to the Holy Spirit, use the graces he gave us, he wants us in Pray It Off. I know that God wants each and every one of you in Pray It Off. And then Father ends with, may the Lord be your strength and your joy. Does he say, may a corn dog be your strength <laughs> and your joy? Does he say, may, may pizza and wings be your strength and joy? No, God. And then I go right into Pope Francis, because I don't know about you guys, but I'm really loving it. 
Pope Francis. And you know what I find about Pope Francis is that everybody loves Pope Francis. He has a dozen ways to lead a better life this year. I'm blown away by these. Create a strong relationship with God. Health and weight is a bonus. You know, those of you who have access to the blog, you can go back in time. Look at some of the testimonies of the people who had success in this group. One of the most beautiful testimonies of all was Jessica's because she came to the group to lose weight and it increased her faith. It increased her relationship with God. Losing weight was the bonus. A strong relationship with God is the backbone of everything. Christians who do not nourish themselves with prayer shrivel up and run dry. And in our case, if we don't nourish ourselves with prayer, we nourish ourselves with something else. This is what Pope Francis suggests. Also, focus on the needs of others. God doesn't suggest we love other people. He commands us to love our Lord our God, he commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Those are commandments. They're not like, hey, if you got time tomorrow, maybe you could be a little nice to your neighbor. No, he's like, you will love your neighbor. It's a commandment. Ask and offer forgiveness. Celebrate and notice the hard work and importance of others. Thank you notes. People say to me, why do you write so many thank you notes? I'm grateful. I am a grateful person. I also think it's important. I come into work early and the people on the 11 to 7 shift is getting, they're getting off and they're kind of dragging out. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for your hard work last night. And they look at me like I'm a little crazy. Like, what? Someone's thanking me? But they like it. Notice people. Thank them. Cherish your family. That old statement that says, no one on their tombstone said, maybe I should have worked a little bit more. On their tombstone, they say, maybe I should have worked a little less. And my mother, sometimes she says, I wish I wasn't so worried with the cleanliness of the house and organizing drawers and spent more time with your kids. You know, cherish your family. Spend time with your family. Now, this is an important one. Don't use vulgarity and avoid envy and jealousy. There's a lot of offensive words out there. And I notice at work, there's so many words that people use like they're the most normal words in the world. Everyone uses them. And I really want to make a point to clean up my language. I would never say the Lord's name in vain if my life depended on it. But those other vulgar terms, believe it or not, every once in a while come out of his mouth. And I want to work on that. Do your best. <coughs> with enthusiasm, humility, competence, and passion. You know, there might be days where you don't like your job, don't want to go, but we need to do our best and work for God. The next one, Pope Francis says, is let it go. Now, let it go now isn't just a Disney song from Frozen. <laughs> let it go is something that we in this group need to really concentrate on. There's so many things we need to let go so that our heart doesn't become like the Berlin Wall. Avoid gossip and using words to hurt others. Gossip, I, I, there's no time for it. Now, if something's a fact, like one time somebody told me something at work, and I thought, what? A, that's terrible gossip. Oh, my gosh. But it's true. And then I thought, well, if it's true, is it gossip? And then I thought, well, if they're talking about somebody else, it's gossip. Even if it's true, there's no time for that. Also, don't whine. I really do not care for whiners. Now, if you're at the scale and you're like, I tried so hard this week. Now, did anyone say that at the scale tonight? I think you did. But you weren't, well, then you're sitting there going, I wasn't whining, I was stating a fact. Now, we need to be careful about whining. Also, being humble. Our strength and our treasure is in God. Smile and be joyful. Be, smiling is contagious. It's contagious. Be at peace. Having faith does not mean not having difficulties, but having the strength to face them, knowing that we are not alone. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like everything to go my way. Does anyone else like everything to go their, their my way? I'm like, do, 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 I'm having a great day, everything is going my way, and then something doesn't go my way, I'm like, well, that's not my way. And then you start getting all nervous and tense and, and like what Nancy was saying, stressed out. And what we have to say, and this is very challenging, 
what does God want me to learn from this? What should I do with this? And if someone's being negative or angry, angry with you, you just keep your calm. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in <laughs> attitudinal healing. And I'm going to stop right there, Bobby. <laughs>